This is Channel 25 WVTT Olean. Now, from the Twin Tiers' biggest broadcast news operation, this is the 6 o'clock report with Jeff Andrulonis and Alexa Olson. Listen on News Radio 96.7 WVTT or watch on News Channel 25 WVTT Television. WVTT proudly presents the 6 o'clock report. Good evening, I'm Alexa Olson. Jeff Andrelonis is off tonight. Topping the 6 o'clock report, the drought New York experienced this summer may mean higher prices for meat lovers. WVTT's Derek Smith has the story. It ain't no thing but a chicken wing, yet some restaurant owners and meat shops in Olean are saying chicken wings this season will have customers forking out an arm and a leg. Chicken wing prices have doubled by the pound since last year, and there are a couple reasons why the spike is so foul. The chickens have been uh, dying in Mexico or being killed off because of some disease they got down there, and the American egg producers are going to start shipping, exporting eggs. I talked to Sports Bar third base owner in Olean, and he says his prices are going up simply because more and more customers are craving his crispy chicken wings. I believe the uh, spike is supply and demand all across the country. United States, everybody has a bar, a restaurant, has chicken wings now. Pizza Hut's selling chicken wings. I heard rumored that McDonald's even going to start selling chicken wings, I heard. So I think that uh, that's the biggest part of it right now. And after discussing with the supermarket, Operator, it's all business. If one chicken factory prices go up, you can't chicken out. Your price has to go up too. Any reason that they can find, they're willing to increase their prices. Um, feed, feed prices are, are going up, so I need to raise my prices. Here in Olean, I'm Derek Smith, News Channel 25, WVTT. Derek Smith, Smith found that no matter what the cost, chicken wing lovers say they will pay anything to get their chicken wings. Well, Congressman Tom Reed says he's serious that farmers need a long-term bill to plan for the futures of their families and farms. As the current federal farm bill nears expiration on September 30th, Congressman Tom Reed is still advocating for a five-year long-term solution for farmers. He says he will continue to work to be able to provide that long-term farm bill and that the deadline should not take away focus on a plan that ensures solution that takes place in years, not months, down the road. Good things are happening in Olean, and residents will soon have new activities to indulge in. The Cattaraugus County Industrial Development Agency approved the Good Times of Olean project this past summer, and progress has already begun to be made. The previous rundown recreation center has now been torn down, and soon a brand new sports and dining complex will be built in its place. Good Times of Olean will also feature a sports field, a mini golf course, and a 24-lane bowling alley. The $5.7 million project is anticipated to open by next spring. 24-year-old Sarah Jones was sentenced to one to three years in state prison for operating a meth lab in her home. The Port Allegheny woman was pleaded guilty back in August to the charges. Prosecutors are still waiting for test results from soil samples to be returned by the Department of Environmental Protection to determine the restitution amount for cleaning up the lab. And 32-year-old Aaron Dial will serve 120 days to 23 and a half months in McKean County Jail for assaulting a Bradford City police officer. He was sentenced in McKean County Court yesterday. Dial punched an officer in the eye when the officer attempted to talk with him about allegations. Dial violated a prosecution from abuse order against him. Dial apologized at the sentencing. A three-member panel has been selected to decide a year-old dispute involving over $400 million in stalled casino payments that New York State says the Seneca Nation of Indians wrongfully stopped. The panel will determine whether the state violated the terms of a 20 or excuse me, 2002 contract by allowing other gambling zones to be built within the Western New York's exclusivity zone. The panel's decision in the case will be binding. Allegheny County in Pennsylvania will issue voter identification IDs to nursing home residents for the upcoming presidential election. The county made this decision in case a new state law requiring voters to present a photo ID on Election Day was passed. 
Allegheny County Executive Rich Fitzgerald is against the new law but says that if the law withstands, it is in the core function of government to help people vote. Fitzgerald is confident the new program will be legal because the laws allow voters to use identification cards used by senior care facilities and state-affiliated colleges. The first annual open house and career fair will be held in the Kane Area High School. It's set for Wednesday, September 26th from 6 to 8 p.m. Among those taking part are the Jamestown Business College, Penn State, Clarion, Lock Haven, St. Bonaventure, Army, Navy, National Guard, Marines, Air Force, and many others. Well, the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra with conductor Daniel Hedgie will perform at 7 p.m. Sunday, September 30th in the second concert of the Friends of Good Music season at St. Bonaventure University's Regina A. Quick Center of the Arts. This will be the orchestra's first return to the Friends of Good Music series in 20 years. In keeping with the season's Celebrate New York theme, the RPO will perform two works by New York's composers Aaron Copeland and Rounds for Strings Orchestra by Rochester-born David Diamond. After intermission, Hedgie will conduct Beethoven's Sympathy No. 2. More news is next. Don't miss it here on News Channel 25 WVTT.